Here we go. We're recording. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Black Girl Nerds Talks. We're back. And <laughs> she's <Jeez>. eating. <laughs> <laughs> hunger is real. Just like misogyny, hunger is real. <laughs> so we're back after a while. Kind of, I guess it'll just be like our summer break, and we're going to yeah. talk about... Well, the things that have happened <laughs> since you last saw us last. And then we're going to jump into a review of the Ghostbusters. So I guess we can talk about um, what's been happening first in the world. Yeah. So um, it's so funny because we already recorded an episode for last week, but then we were like, so much has happened just since last Wednesday when we recorded it. So we just sort of scrapped that and we're starting over. So. What would you like to say about all of the events of the last couple of days? <laughs> so much has happened. Oh my gosh. And it, for me, I think it's almost impossible to not feel this overwhelming sense of despair and yeah. hopelessness. Uh, but I'm so grateful to have an avenue like Black Girl Nerds to be able to just come and just talk about something that just makes me happy. Yeah. And like, where's the joy, yeah. world? Where's yeah. the joy? Yeah. It just makes me happy. And yeah. I feel like I'm a part of a community that can love things and care about things. And it feels like a community that values me. Yeah. Um, because especially with the things that we're seeing in the news with the shootings yeah. and the protests and just you know, everything and just what's going on in the other side of the, you know, the world. And <laughs> That's just America. But then there's like all this other stuff. All the other stuff going on, just feeling like I have a place where I can go for self care and self love yeah. and support system <laughs> because it's really yeah. been hard out here. It really, really has been. Um, and there's been days where I'm just like, I'm tired. Yeah. I'm really <laughs> it's so exhausting right now. It's exhausting. And, yeah. So I, uh, I think I was more angry. Like when we filmed this last time. I know. Now you're just sort of like, ugh. I had anger in my heart. But, um, yeah, I've just really been focusing on anything that can bring joy into my life, happiness into my life. Black Twitter always, I think, yeah. find ways to find goodness. Yeah. And then of course, Black Girl Nerds is just the thing that I go to. So, yeah, that's what I have to say on everything that's I mean, going on. It's just one of those things where, you, like, there's nothing you really can say at this point with all of these things that have happened. It's true. I was a lot more angry during the last um, conversation, too. And now I'm just sort of like, I just have to take care of myself. I just have to take care of the people that I love and sort of relish into things that I have. Because, like, for me, I think what's happened is that instead of being, because I was angry about the injustice, but it's also sort of given me this sort of awareness on how delicate life is and how, like, fragile life is. Oh, my dogs. And how you can sort of, like, be here. Oh, my God, they're just, like, he doesn't even bark that loud. <laughs> he's barking about the injustice. I know, he's like, the injustice of it all. The injustice of it all. Um, but it's... I'm leaving all of that in. It helps accentuate my point. Yeah. Um, yeah, so now I'm just sort of like, a pres like how precious life is and how like each day you just don't know like you really don't know and for me it's been more of like okay so like what am I doing with my life what do I want to spend my time doing who do I want to spend time with like I feel like there's been situations that have come up and I would get upset or I'd be like whatever and I'm just like what do I want to waste my time on this so I think that's where I'm at with it now it's just sort of like you just don't know like the world is crazy right now nothing is promised like love up on your humans <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean love up on your people and and, um, and I and I actually hate like when people are sort of like in response to these tragedies, they're just like love each other, like all oh, we need is love. I'm just like shut the fuck up because I hate when people <laughs> say that because <laughs> it's just like a way to be like I am not like a part of this, so I'm just gonna send you love. So I hate it, but it's like I think it is important to just in our immediate life to like love ourselves and like love the people around us, because we don't know what's going to happen next, which is sort of like an apocalyptic way to think about it, but it's just sort of like, at this point... That's where it's at. Right? That's where we're at. We just you know, to... it just feels oh. that way. So, anyway. I'm going to take care of myself, take my emotional well-being. <laughs> Love um, things, watch shows. I watched 
Did you watch Stranger Times? I've just started Stranger Times. Oh we're going to have to talk about that show. Because it's so good. It's really good. It's, it's like a, um, I think I think we actually have a review of it coming up, but we should talk about it too. But it's just like a warm hug. It's just sort of like, it's like better than half of the summer movies that have come out this summer also. Half? <laughs> like all of them, basically. <laughs> the good majority. Yeah, like it's just, I, I like flew through it. I watched it all I Sunday. I it. I haven't watched all of it yet. Okay, I won't tell you, but it's just like, if you guys haven't seen it, that's like excellent self-care because even if you don't love all of it, it's just so comforting. It's so summer. It's the way summer movies should be. Very summer. Very like this thing. Mm -hmm. Check that out. I love it. Um, So watch that. Okay, so with that in mind, we're going to review Ghostbusters. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, we're going to talk about Ghostbusters. Um, I guess we just start by saying that we are, like, the intended audience for this movie. Like, we want to, and we do, we're not going to be negative, but, like, we really, I know I wanted to, like, love the crap out of this movie. Like, I really wanted to be overexcited about it. And I wonder if part of my tempered reaction to it was sort of, like, that my expectations were too high or what because it's sort of like you see all those people together I loved Spy and I loved the heat so like so I'm not sure but I definitely think that Ghostbusters as a whole and I think we both think this was just okay right like we I think we could agree on that and then we could just go into it like it's not I mean first of all it's not worth a fourth of the hate it's gotten not at all like it's not worth I mean, that goes without saying, but, like, he's going again. Um, he agrees with me. <laughs> um, but um, it's not worth the hate at all. So I think that's true. But, yeah, why don't you you start and sort of tell, like, what you think of Ghostbusters as a whole now that we said that it's okay, not worth all the hate. What are the, some of the positives? So we'll start with the positives, and then we'll go into the negatives, like we yeah. usually do. So okay. the positives, right off the bat, the visual effects were beautiful to me. The ghosts looked absolutely beautiful. Uh, you can see that in the trailer, too, so I guess that's not really a spoiler or really anything significant. But I, I just watching it, I just was like, this is so well done. I just love how this looks. Yeah. Uh, positives, I liked actually watching the movie I did like the choice of them just kind of rebooting the whole thing and making it its own thing yeah Uh, as I guess this kind of leans into the negatives of the film I feel like every time it referred to the old movie that's what bogged the movie down for me truly yeah kind of just going on its own doing its own thing being its own Ghostbusters movie I was I was into it uh but yeah, so that's, that's I liked uh, visual effects, the ghosts. Yeah. I I I liked the women. I liked the casting. <laughs> You're like, did I? <laughs> oh, no, I, I liked the casting choices. Like, I I see what they were going for. Yeah. With it, so I liked that. And I guess there was going to be negatives in that too. Yeah. But I liked what they were going for. Yeah. Um, there was definitely some very funny moments. Yeah. Uh, and I loved when they were Ghostbusters, like, the, there's a scene, and I guess we're kind of making this a spoilery one, yes, spoilers. Uh, but there's a scene where they're just fighting Ghostbusters, and it's honestly the best scene in yeah, the movie, just them so kicking cool. butt, fighting Ghostbusters, just getting it, like, just, it just was the best scene in the movie, and I absolutely love that, I just wish, I'm like, I wish there was more of this in the movie. Yeah, there wasn't really um, that many, go- that much Ghostbusting in the movie as a whole. Yeah. I just wanted Ghostbusting, like just be Ghostbusters. Ghost, I, I wish there was more of like a montage of them, like really, like like the original, up. yeah, yeah. Like I wish there was more of a build up of them having like maybe got gotten more established, yeah. Because I would have bought what they do in later in the movie uh, where they're like frauds, but I'm like, how are they frauds when they barely even got? Yeah, they just did one, yeah, yeah. So Ghostbusting visual effects, uh, I cast kind of, kind of, <laughs> sort of. And uh, just, I, I do actually, looking at it, I like that they rebooted the whole thing and just kind of did their own thing. Um, yeah. But my positives. Those are her yeah. positives. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my positives are along the uh, same lines. I mean, for me, it's just nice to see women 
do stuff like that. Like, just, like, straight up, just objectively, just sort of, like, seeing them in powerful roles, not being attached to a man at all, like, just, like, out there doing it. It's just exciting to watch. Right. And I just loved that element of it to where they're, like, all the men in the movie were dopes. Like, I just loved that. Like, they were all, like, dopey. Like, they were all dumb. And I just was like, this is amazing. <laughs> like, thank you. And, um... It's so interesting because, I mean, I have problems with the villain, but I think it's so hilarious that the villain is basically an internet troll. Like, he basically, like, talks like an internet troll. Like, like that sort of condescending tone and stuff like that. I was like, this is amazing. Um, I had problems with it, but I thought that was cool. Um, I liked the ghost busting. I loved Chris Hemsworth. I'm a partial, I'm partial to Chris Hemsworth anyway, but I just thought he was so funny. Um, and I liked the scenes that he was in. I mean, I thought it was a nice play off of that character. Um, like, well, we'll talk about some of the negatives later, but I thought that was interesting. I thought overall it was like an enjoyable watching experience. Like I felt like it was a good, like, I feel like you wouldn't enjoy this movie if you watched it at home. Like, I think that you have to like watch it. It's kind of like a Transformers movie where when you're there, you're just sort of like, oh, you're like, I mean, that that monster like, just turned into a truck, so that's cool. Screen, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's cool on the screen, and, and like, and when you're with people, and you're like, I feel like when you're with people, you give jokes more of a chance than you do by yourself. Like when you're by yourself, you're like, that's not funny. But like when everybody else is laughing, you're like, huh. True. So when you saw this movie, were you with a big crowd of people? Yeah, it was crowded. It was a crowded yeah. theater. So I saw. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I always see movies like when no one's there. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, that really that really colors the experience of a movie. I think. Yeah, and so my crowd was like really not into it. Uh -huh. But I will say that scene that I mentioned, like even though it was just like not a really like excited crowd, right. that scene like I saw this lady like clapping on the side, and I'm like, yes, you better clap. <laughs> That was a good scene. Yeah, there's definitely <laughs> lots of clapping and cheering during that scene, and um, there were a lot. There's like I, I always like I live in like where I don't live. I'm visiting my parents, and it's in the Georgia suburbs. And literally, all you can do is watch movies. So my theaters are always packed, mm -hmm. and it's the same thing for Independence Day, which we didn't talk about, but like we did talk about in the original episode. <laughs> that crowd was so hype they were like laughing and cheering which maybe that made me like it more i was like this movie's all right <laughs> so I, like people were like visit like groaning at really time. yeah like that was not our crowd at all maybe that's where i live like people are just way more oh uh, yeah they're more like yeah like no like in grace and georgia they were all about it they're like this movie is amazing i was like yeah this movie is amazing and then i was like wait so <laughs> when we did our review of independence day i was like the movie was trash and you're like it wasn't that bad yeah <laughs> so that's maybe why so like I said this was a packed theater and so that experience was just really fun because everybody was laughing and it was like very sort of like we all wanted the movie to be good versus I bet like an LA crowd or a New York crowd or a DC crowd or something is not going to do that like here I feel like we should do an episode on that because I think that's really interesting because I think there are certain parts of the country that give things more of a shot and right. I think also that's why certain movies get made because like um, I think I saw stats on like that movie 16 hours by michael bay like crushed around here like yeah. the the per theater average was really really um big like now you see me is like it was like really big around here so it's like it's That's really so interesting funny. that is so funny i think there's something to that because i'm originally from ohio and i yeah. just feel like every movie i've seen in ohio is just like so much fun yeah but now i'm living DC area it's kind of like yeah. so, everyone's so critical everybody's so critical yeah <laughs> I don't know I mean I think that's Maybe. like seriously that's a um I mean that's I mean not to get political but that's basically how this election is happening is because the internet world is kind of out of touch with the actual world because I think we forget that like people don't spend all their days on Twitter it's like only 10% of people do it so like what are all these other people doing they're just like I'll go see Ghostbusters. I don't care. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what they're doing, so. Don't care. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's why Life of Pets got number one again, because people are just like, oh, right. well, I care. And this is whatever. Or whatever. I wish I could be more like that. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Button agrees. <laughs> Button never barks, by the way. That's why it's so shocking to hear him bark. So I don't know what he's barking about. <laughs> Life of pets. Your life of pets. He like <laughs> always interject in the right times. Um, so yeah, those are the things I liked were the dogs and buttons. Buttons, Howard. It's okay. 
anyways I'm not editing that out guys so <laughs> we have um yeah so I like that I do like the casting as well I think Kate McKinnon I have she's a good and a bad for me I think she she was so committed to her role and she was a very distinct character and a character that wasn't anything like the old characters but seemed like she could exist in the Ghostbusters world, which I really liked. But as we get into the negative, she got bad jokes. So anyway, <laughs> but that's sort of the thing. So those are my positives. And, and so now we're going to talk about negatives, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so um, one thing for me is that I felt like... I felt like they made these really clear characters for each person. Yeah. And specifically with Leslie Jones's character, Patty, and um, Kate McKinnon's character, Oltzman. Right. Uh, I feel like they relied too much on the characters that they started to become very one note as yeah. the movie went along. Like, yeah. you can kind of, there was motivations for uh, specifically Kristen Wiig's character, and I guess you could even say for... Um, I don't know why I'm blanking on her name. Melissa McCarthy's <laughs> Melissa character? Melissa McCarthy's yeah. uh, character. Uh, but I just felt like you couldn't, like, there wasn't really clear story arcs. Like, that's something really I'm really big about is story arcs. Like, where do they start and where do they end in the movie? Right. And for, I just felt like there wasn't, that wasn't clear. And it yeah. kind of wasn't clear throughout the whole whole movie as well like just what their evolution was like there's only one character that i felt yeah mm -hmm. there's only one character that i felt had like a whole story mm -hmm. in the movie and it just the, i don't know pacing was a little weird too yeah um jokes the comedy for me felt completely flat like really none of the jokes worked uh the cameos really fell very flat which mm -hmm. Is disappointing in a movie like this. You would hope that the cameos really, um, like, they're like, oh, and they just really just. You're like, good. oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, it's only like you're, it was almost like you were waiting for them to happen. Right. Like, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the comedy just was really off to me, which was really disappointing. Uh, cameos off. Uh, characters felt very one note. Even with uh, Liam, not Liam. Chris Hemsworth's character. Yeah. Uh, I felt like his character, like, it was funny at the beginning, like, this, like, him playing this kind of dumb, beautiful person. Oh my but gosh, then when, he, like he when he puts, his, when he puts his hands in his glasses, I, like, that, died. I was cracking up. I died. I, <laughs> I was just like, oh, man. That whole scene was really, really funny. Yeah, I agree. That, that scene was really funny. Yeah, Worked after that, they didn't seem to know what to do with him as much yeah. but that scene I just was I was like laughing so hard at it because he just was so matter of fact by it he needs to be a more comedy he's really good at it he's almost better at it than <laughs> the Thor stuff so uh, you don't think so I think he should uh I don't know about Thor I think he's good in Thor I I just don't really like those movies that much oh, yeah. but uh I just think in other movies they say he's bankable but not really no no <laughs> he's not at all so. that's why i said comedy might be the better option because they try try putting him in dramas and they never work so maybe he's better in comedies yeah or nothing <laughs> <laughs> who knows like marvel that marvel paycheck will last you for a while yeah so. that's true and they're just about to start filming the third thor so so he's not wanting for anything no <laughs> No. So are those your negatives, you think? Uh, yeah, I think I think that's really, I mean, I think that's the biggest downfall of this movie. If the comedy isn't working, that really, really hurts yeah. the movie. Uh, which is weird because I still feel like I kind of liked the movie. Maybe I liked the movie because I liked the potential of it. And mm. I, I just have to be honest. Like, I could really see where it was going. And my negatives is that I feel like because of the expectation, because of the pr pressure, because of the negative press, I feel like it, or maybe originally it really went for it, and it really like it might went be an off. editing problem. Maybe. I feel like it's yeah. an editing problem because I could really see like very like flashes of like Paul Feigness in there. Right. I could just really, and I'm just like, I feel like they should just really just went all the way, like just just go for it. And I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it was. All the pressure. I don't know if it was because it also uh, was a PG thirteen movie, or yeah. But it's kind of they wanted to make it family friendly, so I feel like that kind of hurt it. I don't know. Yeah. 
that button agrees with you. He's like, I get it. I get it. I get yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> well. Well, I mean, I agree with everything you said. I won't add too much to it. I think my biggest thing was just the story. Um, I felt that the story wasn't good, which makes it sound like I didn't like the movie. But I just think the story wasn't, it like wasn't put together well. Like it wasn't like, it just seems like they didn't have a good baseline. And so it's like kind of like building a house. Like if you don't have a good foundation, then nothing works. Like none of the jokes can work. Nothing ever works because the jokes don't have grounding. So like what happened to me is when I would like a joke would come up or something like that and it would have no reference point. Like like the jokes felt like they were coming from nowhere and that's because they had really no story they were building on like in comedy like I write comedy in my own life or whatever but like in comedy you have to like ha- you're supposed to be building comedy off of the situations that are happening but what happens is that they just were like sort of like um like bantering back and forth and seeing what happens versus having like comedy that's based in the Ghostbusters world or like based on their characters but because they don't have well-defined characters and because there's not a well-defined story then of course the comedy's not going to work so I think it even extends even into just lines that were said in general yeah like line uh I think Leslie Jones says it Patty says it where she's like oh I'm a Ghostbuster and I feel like that's a moment where you're supposed to be like yeah you are a Ghostbuster right Nothing in the movie that the story has really doesn't build that up, yeah, has like like cemented the fact that you are a part of this team. You're a Ghostbuster, right. and that's like the thing throughout this whole movie where they're trying to put in a story. They're trying to like, okay, with this character, no right. one believes her, so not, now she's finally believed. Like, right, you know, get that, and then there's kind of like. You don't know what's going on with Melissa McCartney's character. <laughs> yeah, that one's that's good. that was going to be another one of my yeah I, I negatives. Actually, yeah, like she doesn't have a character at all. I feel yeah. like everybody else got character, even if they weren't fully fleshed out. She didn't have anything. She just was like, I wrote a book with right. her yeah. about yeah. It was the person who truly believed and like really stuck with it. Right. Um, but I don't know. They just really but it didn't do that. that. It, wasn't good and then there was no arc so like and then the other thing like you said there's no arc so like she like even the main character um who was played by what's her name uh, Kristen Wiig yeah Kristen Wiig so like where was her arc it's like she immediately was like I don't believe in ghosts and then literally her arc gets taken care of like five minutes into the movie because she's like I believe in ghosts now so she had nowhere else to go you know right she's like because basically her dilemma in the movie could have been this thing that stretched out through the whole movie. Yeah. You believe it, you believe in ghosts, but you're hiding it, and you work at this prestigious uh Yeah, they place. should have kept her at the school yeah. and had her, like, trying to hide it. Slowly trying to, like, yeah. realize this is what you're going to do. That would have... And that would have arced it out, because she could have yeah. been like, I'm going to do this. Right. And, and, and the tenure thing could have been a part of it. A huge thing. That's that's a big deal. Like, yeah, that could have been tension between her and like where's the whole movie? Like I don't know. <laughs> that would have been easy. Just like a yeah. scene here, a scene there, and just like you didn't even have to like have it be spoken word. It could have been like montage, like her ghost busting and then trying to like make it to her classes, like her ghost busting and like yeah. trying to hide her costumes from her students. Like it would have been that easy. That would have been so fun. Yeah, and that would have just taken care of that whole storyline because you don't need a bunch of scenes so that's the biggest problem like I just the whole time I was just like they should have just this is so stupid because I think all writers say this because we're pretentious but it's like I wish I could have like had a chance to write something like this because I know like what I would have done to like smooth some of these off but maybe it's just editing like maybe some of these things we're saying are in the editing process but those are my that's like my biggest thing it's like everything stems from the fact that there is no story so everything that works is kind of random like I said like it would be random if I would laugh you know and but then like it's just sort of like the house analogy but like because the presentation's nice and the graphics are good and the characters I mean like the people who play the characters we like them I think it still led to an overall pleasant movie watching experience like I didn't leave being like I wasted my money but I think that if the story would have better been better everything would have been better it would have been number one at the box office I don't know I don't think it was gonna be I mean it's got a pretty good rating it's got a 70 percent yeah. So I don't I think it's not gonna be number one because of the men who 
like men are really hating on this movie. I was yeah. listening to today and this guy was dogging this movie and I'm just like, all right. It's, it's, <laughs> well, it's like, yeah. It's just yeah. like, I hope none of you guys have sex with women ever again. <laughs> that's what I think I'm like who is yeah. having sex with you like really like I was watching I think it was the Angry Joe show and they just were like it's the worst thing ever and I was like you're like it's not it's just not it's not great it's not horrible so yeah. but they just like to get they get off on it and then like if you and it's so funny because I was looking at the reviews and any um reviewer on YouTube who gave it like a decent review or okay review it's like 4,000 dislikes, 2,000 likes. We're just like, what kind of world (laughs) are we listening? I know, right? Like, what world are we living in? Like, why? Like, just because they liked the movie? Yeah, they just, just because, There were very fun parts of the movie. Yeah, I thought it was fun. The first first scene of the movie was very fun. I I liked the tone. Oh, yeah, that guy was so great. I loved that guy. My my mom, my mom was like, he's my favorite part of the movie. I was like, me too. Yeah, there, there were really great parts of the movie. Like when he throws the keys down, like you're gonna die. I, was I like, think this is gonna be something. <laughs> setting up with the movie was really good yeah. too. Like, there's this book that she wrote, and it might ruin her life. And yeah, was, the setup was good. I just think it kind of lost itself along the way. I think if um, they got another shot at it, they would I, land I, it. I agree. I think that if they had a two, they might be able to go back and learn from their mistakes, have less pressure, not care, yeah. and do what they want to do, yeah. and move forward without having to worry about what people say. Because I still think that I like the idea of those characters. Like I said, I liked Spy. Mm-hmm. I like them. I think they just needed to like chill. I think yeah. it's just too much pressure. I yeah. mean, it happened to Batman. It happened to Zack Snyder. Well... Zack Snyder just acts like that. We should have expected it. But it happens to directors all the time. Like, we can't all be Colin Travino, I guess. But, I mean, Justice, I mean, uh, what is it? Jurassic World wasn't that great either, but um, no, it, it made a billion dollars. So, <laughs> billions of dollars. So. Uh, should we talk a little bit about Leslie Jones before we go? Yeah, just like a quick... Um, call upon the hater at least just like the hater community so just today um leslie jones was showcasing some of the hateful 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 like when i say hateful you're if you go look at her mentions you'll be surprised about how hateful like i was i was like shocked i was like this is disgusting um even for me who is very aware of our racist society i I was shocked um so they just were sending her horrible like gorilla memes like all these terrible things um and yeah I mean there's not I don't know what to even say about it it's just um I think it just shows why we need black girl nerds so much and like why we need Mm -hmm. black girl magic and why we need representation in media and representation within these communities because it's just like I mean that's what's happened to this white fanboy community is that they're just not checked at all there's no black people around and like um I was like watching what was it uh do you watch um black under comedy at all yeah yeah, yeah. And he was I just like the review yet oh my god he was so angry and he was talking about how just like um how people get mad at him and I was just like I bet mad people give him more of a time than they would give a bad of a time more than they would give any like white reviewer and it's just like so frustrating like how they've taken control over the nerd medium and I just think with the Leslie Jones thing it's like we just can't let them we just have to like keep we can't because I mean let's we can be honest and say that we had reservations of her character and yeah and even still, I do feel like she could have been a historian or something. Yeah. That would have made more sense in the yeah. story than ever. Um, <laughs> yeah, because she was doing historical things. Like, they yeah, did have her know things. Why just not make her a historian? Like, her working at the MTA didn't, work, didn't make sense. But it's fine. Like, that's, that's us being critical of representation and right. the, the narratives that people who are usually mostly white are creating. Right. But... It, She's good in the film. She's funny in the film. She's fil- she gives so much energy to the film. Like, like really adds energy. Like, the parts yeah. where it's just like, okay. Like, she really just livens it up. And t- to hear that is just so disheartening. It's it's so disheartening. But, you know, we have to push past it. We have to let people know that we're out here. We're nerdy. We like this type of stuff. We watch these movies. We pay to watch these movies. Um and support her and know that she's you know she's awesome and it's really great to see someone who looks like her has her skin color has her body type and is like kicking butt and killing ghosts and we're you know busting yes. oh my gosh <laughs> like 
when would we ever have somebody who looks like her in a major movie? Like, it's like, no. never it, has it, ever happened. It's never happened. Ever. Like, ever. <laughs> so. A certain, like, skin color you have to have. There's a certain type of hair you have Everyone's to have. Zoe certain- Saldana. Zoe Saldana. <laughs> Joyce Sonia is everybody. She's every color of the rainbow. There's, like, she's probably why people think that there's purple and green people out here, yeah. out here or blue or whatever, because right. she's always playing different colors. Like, And it's 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 refreshing to see that. Yeah. Uh, and you just have to just be supportive and push, you know, push for more representation out here because it's, it's rough out here. And people are really trying to silence people and yeah. silence Scare stories yeah. and act like stories are not worth it and we just need to have a variety and just be motivated and be awesome women and keep doing it yeah and keep doing it push against the racism push against the misogyny yeah buy movie tickets <laughs> keep hashtagging because that i mean people listen as much as they get mad about it People listen to Oscar So White as as much as they, you know, were butthurt about it. <laughs> it, it changed things, so that's good. <laughs> Let's talk, I mean, the Emmys, if we can mention that really, really quick. Like, oh, yeah. Major category has a person of color nominated. Like, I know, that's never I'm happened. Not <laughs> You're not playing anymore. It's like Tony, it's like the Tonys. We took over yeah. the Tonys, too. Yeah, so. So we just have to keep, we just have to keep screaming. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Until they listen. <laughs> So I think that's it for this episode. That's a review of Ghostbusters. Of course, we want to know what you guys think. Yeah, what did you think? Yeah, did you like it? Did you not like it? Is the hate worth it? Are we just being super optimistic? <laughs> we or... might be. Like I said, I saw it in the crowded theater in Georgia. So, <laughs> so we said so. Let us know in the comments below what you guys thought of the movie. Your favorite parts? Oh, it was. Uh, was anyway and um we'll talk to you guys later bye